Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k. We're continuing on with our rate it or hate it videos from the Necron Codex and today we're going to be looking at the Catacomb Command Barge which is one of the Necron vehicles that's got the character keyword. We're going to look into that today. Just before we get into that make sure you are subscribed if you are new around here or if you've just not yet subscribed. That massively helped me and the channel. Right let's get into this Catacomb Command Barge. We're going to get through that data card we're going to talk about how I personally use it, what I would do. We're not going to go through every single piece of synergy like we used to. It's now just more of a personal touch to these videos. And at the end of the video, it's going to be whether I rate it or hate it. Very simple. So let's get into the data card to begin this video. We've got a movement of 10 inches, which is pretty nice, pretty fast. On top of the fly keyword as well, don't forget. We've got toughness 8. We've got a 3 plus armor, 4 plus invulnerable save. So that's a light vehicle kind of standard, but the inman save is nice. There is an ability which we'll go over on, we'll go over in a moment, which will add to the defense of the command barge. We've got nine wounds on top, leadership six plus, and OC is three. The OC maybe could have been four, but yeah, it's okay. Three is fine. Now I want to just move down to the bottom of the data card for a moment with the keywords. It's got vehicle, character, fly, and catacomb command barge. Nowhere currently on this date card does it have a noble keyword or an overlord keyword, which is kind of odd. Maybe they'll patch that up in the January update, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, I find that weird because one of the detachments, which is the Abasence Phalanx detachment, requires overlords to make it work. And this is an overlord just based on a barge. There's actually a few other characters that also don't have that, they lack that keyword. I think the Silent King is one of them. Imitate the Stormlord's another one. I just find it very strange that the Command Barge doesn't have the Overlord keyword in built. Maybe it'll get fixed, but for now, it hasn't. We'll, we'll talk about the detachments and the general uses later on in this video. But let's get back into it. So we've gone through the keywords. So this is 150 points. We'll talk about that as well, which is you know why I think that's a little bit too pricey. Let's get into the ranged weapons to begin. So you've got, the st you've got a lot of options here. So you start us off with the Gorse Cannon and the Staff of Light. That's the standard natural selection. So we'll talk about that first. So the Gorse Cannon has lethal hits, 24 inch range, only three shots. Hitting on threes, not twos, very odd. Strength five, minus two AP, two damage. Now throughout a battle, you might take off a few Marines here and there. Don't expect it to do a lot of work, especially not against anything worthy. Even though this is a command barge and it's, you know, it could potentially be one of, it could even be our warlord, but don't expect it to do a lot against the enemy warlord and the enemy's, you know, characters and big vehicles and stuff. Because it's not, it's not really going to do anything. The Staff of Light, which is an additional weapon, only 18 inch range this time. Again, three shots, hitting on twos. I suppose you're firing from the overlord as opposed to the barge itself. So that's probably why it hits on twos with the Staff of Light. Strength 5 minus 2 AP, 1 damage. So it does even less work than the Gorse Cannon. And there's no like special keywords, no lethal hits or anything. You've then got the Tesla Cannon. Now the Tesla Cannon has sustained hits two. Of course, even though it's Tesla, it's not got assault here, it's, just, it's a cannon. 24 inch range, hitting on threes, strength six, no AP, one damage. So it's more of a light infantry, light infantry weapon, whereas the Gorse Cannon is more of a, a Space Marine kind of standard slash elite infantry weapon. So it is a bit of a take your pick there. Now if you kept the Staff of Light, it's got a melee profile which is 4 attacks, hitting on 3s, strength 5 minus 2 AP, 1 damage. The exact same profile as it has in range, you can have that in melee. It's not doing much, I think I would rather take the Overlord's Blade at this point. Because it has devastating wounds, first of all. You've got 4 attacks, you're hitting on 2s, strength 8 minus 3 AP, 2 damage. So you're basically having a War Scythe there. And that to me is much more valuable than having either the extra shots at range or having those minor attacks in melee. So I think my personal loadout here would probably be the Gorse Cannon and the Overlord's Blade. It's all damage too, which means you can throw him into, you know, a standard two wound infantry kind of unit. Again, I always use Space Marines because they're an easy go-to. It could be Gene Steelers, for example two wound models, throw this thing into them, the range attack and the melee attack marries up and you're wounded on threes if not twos and the damage two is all you need. 
So that's my personal loan out. Of course, you, you take the Resurrection Orb, it's free. It says it can be equipped, but you just take it. Why wouldn't you? And we'll go over that as well in a moment. Now, the right-hand side of the deck card, you've got the ability Deadly Demise 1. So only a minor explosion there, not too big of a deal. I mean, I don't even know why they bother putting Deadly Demise 1. It barely does anything nowadays. You've got to roll a 6 just to get it to do that. Reanimation Protocols is also nice. It's not too bad. But the two abilities here that are unique to the command bars, you've got the carrier wave, which is an aura for units within six inches. You add one to the object control characteristic or models in the unit. That used to be so-so, I suppose, in the index. I don't think people were using it that much, but now even less so because Cryptex can do it with scarabs, for example. That's a new tactic that some people are using. But I don't think paying 150 points to just add a bit of OC is worthy but it's got it it's got it the second ability is the advanced quantum shielding this is the one that adds to its defense so each time an attack targets this model if the strength is more than our toughness so our toughness is eight so if it's strength nine or more you subtract one from the wound roll so what that means is effectively at the very best it's only going to be wounding on a four plus unless it is strength 16 because that would be starting on a two plus put it down to a three plus so it's always wounding pretty much on a 4 plus or a 3 plus at strength 16. Very rare. So that is helpful to the defense mechanisms of everything. But you've also got to remember there's enhancements. Again, we'll go over that in a moment. We'll go over that in a moment. I'm jumping the gun here. War gear abilities, you've got the resurrection orb. Now, some people would suggest that this has been nerfed. Some others would suggest that it's been buffed. I'm in the camp that it's been nerfed. I can kind of see both ways here. So instead of using this in your opponent's command phase, you now use it only once per battle, which is why I think it's nerfed. But you you basically select the phase that you're going to be using it in, and at the end of the phase, you can pop it off once per once per battle. Instead of doing D3, you're going to be doing D6. And with the command barge, it's quite unique because you can do it within six inches for any Necrons infantry unit or any Necrons mounted units. So there are some units that don't naturally have any resurrection orbs attached to them. For example, Death Marks, Trike Praetorians, Scorpet Destroyers, Tomb Blades maybe. Now the Locust Destroyers can have the Locust Lord with the resurrection orbs, so I won't include them here. But there are other units, did I say Death Marks, Flayed Ones, things like that, that don't normally have the resurrection orbs attached or nearby. So this is unique in that respect. A lot of those units don't necessarily need it. Maybe I'd consider Scorpion Destroyers, maybe I'd consider Tomb Blades. Not Flayed Ones, definitely not Flayed Ones. Trike Praetorians, maybe, maybe. Especially if they can get the Overlord keyword attached to this, this model, then yeah, that would be a, a big help because that kind of relates to Trike Praetorian units. But you got to then look at it again, you have to assess it again. You're paying 150 points for effectively a res orb and you're adding one to the OC for units. Okay, yeah, that's that's where I'm at with that. I'm not too keen on it, but we'll go into my tactics of how I would use it. I've not had much experience at this moment with the command barge, and I'm kind of waiting to see what the update does, if there is any update with the keywords. So yeah, it's got no overlord keyword. The basis balance basically doesn't really interact the way it should with this model. I mean, if it does get fixed, it will open a door to quite a few things. But at this current time, you can only really use the stratagem for the minus one to damage as it's a vehicle, which is still pretty good. It's still pretty good. But the way I would use it right now in the current form is using the Index Dynasty, the Awakened Dynasty, because you've got the four plus four no pain say, which is now known as the Dermal Bond Enhancement, I think it is. It used to be called something else, didn't it? We used to put it on the Transcendent Katarn, but the Transcendent Katarn now cannot take enhancements. So if you were taking the Awakened Dynasty, which, to be honest with you, we're all using the Canoptic Court and Hypercrypt Legion now, aren't we? But if you were to still use the Awakened Dynasty, which is still good, don't get me wrong, it's still decent, you would slap this enhancement on this model. You know, a 4 plus Funo Pain Save on top of your Toughness 8. You've got the Quantum Shielding ability. Go on, your nose. You've got 9 Wounds. You've got the 4 plus invulnerable save on top of the 3 plus armor. That could be very resilient as a model. 
It's just a shame that the OC is only three and the damage output isn't that much. So really, is it going to be just like another kind of scarab unit, just going around stealing stuff like it used to do in, in Ninth Edition? Is that how we're using it? Shouldn't be for that kind of points. In general, I think there is a weakness to that quantum shielding, which is, well, first of all, lethal hits. Lethal hits is going to ignore the wound roll. Second of all, anything that can re-roll wound rolls. I mean, our immortals do that great. They get to re-roll their wound rolls. So even though you've got the minus one to the wound roll, if they're re-rolling it, you're kind of getting past that advanced quantum shielding. We've already mentioned the OC with Canoptic Scarabs and Technomancers, or whatever you're taking around them. But even that isn't really the biggest tactic now. I think there are just other ways to get OC, you know, toes onto objectives rather than doing Technomancers and Scarabs. The orb does add an interesting element to a command barge though because, I mean, we already spoke about it a little bit briefly, but if you've got a unit of immortals, let's say 10 Necron immortals, and you've got a Chronomancer in there, and if you really wanted an orb, you would have to take the Overlord in there with the Translocation Shroud or the Standard Overlord. There's no real reason for the Standard Overlord in my opinion anymore, but yeah, you take one of, the, of the, those two. Now, if you've got the Command Barge, then it unlocks another character, which could be maybe Imitate the Stormlord. He could go in that unit, he could be farming you CP, and you could have the Command Barge not so far behind, within 6 inches, to still give you that orb. It's expensive still, 150 points to do that. It's not ideal. Yeah, you're probably better off just leaving Imitech at home if you want. If you really, really want that res orb in the unit, you may as well just put a res orb in the unit. It's just too expensive, 150 points. I do like the fact that it interacts with Tomb Blades though, and I do like the fact that it can interact with Scorbit Destroyers. Maybe you're looking at the Annihilation Legion with the Scorbit Lord, the Scorpec Destroyers going with them, and they could be followed up with the Command Barge. Maybe that's a play, because they are your key unit in that detachment. It is probably our weakest detachment, to be honest with you, so... You know, it's not going up in my estimations just by using these kind of strategies. The problem is it's just far too expensive, 150 points. At this moment in time, I would say 100 even makes it a so-so unit. And that's knocking off like literally a third of the points cost there. And that's without the Overlord keyword. If it did have the Overlord keyword, would it make a big difference? plus one to the wound roll for that particular unit. I mean, Command Barge isn't doing a massive amount of work. So yeah, I mean, the enhancements, the Overlord model, you've got the on Honorable Combatant. It's not really gonna destroy enemy models. Unflinching Will, you're gonna give it Precision and Anti-Infantry 5 plus. It's not really gonna do much of that. Warrior Noble, it's a minus one to hit in melee for the enemy units. Who cares? And Eternal Conqueror getting to reroll hit rolls. It's, you know, so the actual enhancement don't they're not that great for a command barge. The ability isn't that great for a command barge. So yeah, even if it did get the actual keyword, it's not making it that much better. So we're getting on to the part of the video where we've got to rate it or hate it. You kind of guess where this is going. But at this current time, I've got to say, I hate it. I hate it. Ninth edition, I loved it. I had, I wanted to run two or even three in a single list. This time, there's just no need for them. There's just no need for them, especially at 150 points. But guys and girls, that has been today's video. You'll have to let me know, do you rate it or do you hate it? And also let me know how you play the Command Barge with this new Necrons Codex. 